Flying through space aboard a rocket or a space station may sound incredible and fun, but let us tell you this now, it is less than glamorous. Sure, being nearly able to touch the stars is amazing, don't get us wrong, but we are here to show you the other side of things, from peeing in a spacesuit to powdered remains. This is weird things you didn't know about spaceflight. 14. Maximum Absorbency Garment If you were to hear this term applied to an article of clothing on Earth, what would you think it is? Probably the same thing that it really is, but in space. The Maximum Absorbency Garment is a diaper for adults that gets used during their extravehicular activities, or EVAs, and throughout takeoff and landing, they are fitted with extra absorption materials to help absorb both urine and feces, although they're rarely used, as astronauts typically use the restroom before takeoff, landing, and EVAs, and they also time their water consumption correctly. The diapers, or MAGs, generally are just there for peace of mind. It's always nice knowing you can go in your suit if you can't make it to a space bathroom in time. 13. Alien Germs Okay, so the germs aren't technically alien germs, but they are germs not on this planet nonetheless. You may think that, since so many millions and billions of dollars are spent on space travel, the shuttles and stations would be clean, right? Well, it's actually just the opposite, and being in one is basically as dirty as being in your house after not cleaning for extended periods of time. In fact, scientists have checked into it, and they found more than 4,000 different microbes and bacterias living among astronauts in space, on about every touchable surface. You'd think they'd have figured that one out by now. We mean they're sent off our planet and they still have to deal with a plethora of germs? Yuck. 12. Space Sickness This is also commonly called Space Adaption Syndrome and must be space's equivalent of altitude sickness here on Earth. Around half of all those who venture beyond our atmosphere and into space experience some form of space sickness, and it can get ugly. It is thought to be brought on by a mismatch in the information their visual and vestibular systems tell them about their surroundings and causes a type of motion sickness. Many things can contribute to making the problem worse, such as g-forces and sleep deprivation, and astronauts commonly wear anti-nausea patches under their suits as vomiting into a suit could actually prove fatal. The best solution to the problem? Restrict what can be seen to something like the page of a book or a little screen, and try to disregard everything else until the space sickness can be ridden out. 11. Gravity Problems Throughout our lives, we are subjected to a force that we just come to accept and rarely think about, and that force is gravity. But astronauts in space aren't bound by the same forces that we Earthbounders are. In space, astronauts have to learn how to live in zero-g conditions, which can be harder than it sounds. One problem living without gravity is that blood doesn't tend to flow the same way that it does on Earth, instead of automatically traveling down because it's being pulled downward. It can flow upward into the upper parts of the body. When they get to space, a lot of astronauts tend to get a bit puffy in the face because of the abundance of blood flowing into it. That is until their bodies adjust to their new environment. 10. Dead Skin This is probably something that nobody ever thinks about when they're strapped into a rocket that's headed for space. Think about this. The average human sheds off approximately 600,000 skin particles every 60 minutes, but most of the time we don't notice as it falls toward the floor. But what happens to those same skin cells in, say, zero gravity? Precisely what happens to anything else in zero gravity? It floats. This kind of ties back to the cleanliness and germiness of space stations and vehicles, as it's pretty gross not to mention germy, to have all that skin just floating up in their vicinity. Don Pettit, a former inhabitant of the International Space Station, told the world what happened when an astronaut takes off their socks in space. This cloud, this explosion of skin particles, detritus, floats out, and you're in this weightless environment and the particles have nowhere to go but out. 9. Number 1. So with no gravity up there in space, how do astronauts know when it's time to, you know, take a leak? 
Well, it doesn't work exactly the same as it does here on Earth, since with no gravity, bladders don't quite know when it's time to go. That's because the nerves that let you know when you've got to hit the restroom aren't activated like they are here, due to them not filling up bottom to top. The zero gravity allows the liquid to just float around in there and lets the thing fill all the way up to the tippy top and sometimes if they're not careful, astronauts can find themselves experiencing a forced sudden going wherever they are. Good thing these guys and gals are highly trained and we're sure they prepare for such instances. 8. Actually going to the bathroom with all of this talk about no gravity and things just floating around and contaminating everything on the ship, you might be wondering just how astronauts do use the restroom. Well, it's not as easy as it is here on Earth, and the astronauts have a specialized way of doing what's usually so natural. Back in the beginning of our exploration of space, things weren't as good as they are today, as astronauts essentially just used bags to hold all of their waste. This became a problem for Gordon Cooper, the last to fly on a Project Mercury flight in 1963. His urine collection bag ended up leaking and getting into the electronics on the craft and disabled his automatic systems, making him have to take control during re-entry, which is a risky maneuver. These days though, astronauts just use a hose for number ones or a specialized toilet with airflow and a tight seat for number twos. Sounds glamorous, doesn't it? 7. Spaceships stink Not only have astronauts described the smell of space along the lines of like welding fumes and sulfurous, but they've chimed in on how not so great their accommodations smell as well. It makes sense though. You get a handful of people and put them in a tight space they can't leave for months at a time, you're bound to get some foul smells. They're also required to work out for around two hours per day, and that can't help the situation much at all. That's why NASA installs an array of deodorizing machines in places like the International Space Station to help combat the smells that are bound to accrue in such a small area. Even with them, astronaut Scott Kelly has said that the most expensive human-made project ever, the ISS, smells like a jail. 6. Speaking of working out. No, we're not going to go into the kinds of workouts these fine men and women do up there. But we are going to talk about something that comes from them, sweat. What happens when someone sweats out there in space? It doesn't fall as there's no gravity, but it doesn't typically float off either. What it does is sticks to the skin in tiny little sweat balls until they wipe them off, or somebody else decides to do it for them. They will even collect their sweat so that they can use it as drinking water later on. It's not so bad though when you consider that a lot of their water is also recycled urine. 5. Vomiting Have you ever thrown up into something and then decided that you wanted to hang on to it for a while? Of course not! But that's kind of what astronauts have to do if they vomit. If they don't manage to get it into a barf bag, it'll float about until they somehow manage to catch it all and then tuck it away. If they do get it into a bag, then that bag gets to hang out with the rest of the trash on board until a commercial supply vehicle shows up and can take it. You see, places like the International Space Station can hold up to two metric tons worth of trash on board until it's picked up and it can sometimes be months between pickups. 4. The runs, man. While things like diarrhea and stomach flu don't typically happen all that often to a given person, the chances of something like that happening in space are there. And it has happened, reasonably early in the space program too. On Apollo 8, a three-person mission around the moon, one of the astronauts got a pretty sick stomach. Frank Borman took a sleeping pill to try to get some rest, and instead, he ended up awake and alert and had such bad diarrhea that the water system couldn't handle it. The astronauts ended up with droplets of feces floating around, and it surely wasn't pretty. Borman didn't really want to tell Mission Control, but his fellow capsule mates William Anders and Jim Lovell forced him to. 3. Sneezing in a spacesuit Have you ever been curious as to what happens when an astronaut has to sneeze but are snugly tucked inside their spacesuit? If you've ever seen Rocket Man with Harlan Williams, you know that it could be a terrible thing. 
but lucky for astronauts everywhere, there's a pretty easy solution. What do they do? They tuck their chins forward as far as they can, thus aiming the sneeze down, and let it blast off right into their suits so that they can save their visors from sticky, drippy mucus. 2. Cleaning up With all of the nastiness that goes on in space, you might be wondering how the astronauts get clean. Well, during Gemini and Apollo missions, they would clean themselves up with a little bit of soap and a small amount of water and a towel. In Skylab, they strapped their feet to the floor so that they didn't float away, got into a tube-like contraption, secured everything, then used a pressurized portable bottle of water to get clean. They had to make sure to suck up all of the water and soap into a collection bin, as water could interfere with many electronic systems on board. With the ISS, they went old-fashioned, and astronauts used water, rinseless shampoo, liquid soap, and a towel. All oh, the joys of living in space. We have seen some pretty strange things already, and we still have one more to go. But first, we'd like to ask, what do you think would be most challenging about living in space? Do you have what it takes? Let us know in the comments below. 1. Fatality Another thing not many probably consider is, what happens to somebody's body should they perish while in space? Most probably don't think much about it, because you either die on the way up, or you don't. But it's always possible that someone could croak while up there. So what do the other astronauts do about it? Well, there is something called the Body Back Program, which came out of a deal between NASA and PROMESA, a burial company. Simply put, the other astronauts basically zip up the body into a Gore-Tex bag, which they then inflate and hold funeral rites. Then the bag with their crew member in it would be placed in the airlock and exposed to space until it froze completely. After that, a robotic arm would grab the bag, vibrate it until its contents were disintegrated into a powder, and the water from inside would evaporate through a hole in the bag. The bag would then fold into a square, and whatever is left over would be given to the family. Sounds brutal, no? If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel so that you can always keep up with our informative uploads. And be sure to check out this next video we're sure you're going to love.